Hey man, I'm Ice Man, but I just jumped off the porch with Dirty Glove Bastards. I posted in the club with the shooter. This week I'm pulling a little light over. The chopper got titties like hooters. Yeah. All right, today we got Iceman Buddy visiting us from All Time of Arkansas. What's going on with you today, bro? Man, what's good, man? Welcome to Dirty Glove. Man, well, I'm happy to be here, man. For sure. What you out here working on in Atlanta? Man, I got a show tonight, man, that knocked out Barn Grill, man, with B Moss them, man. They got um, Coach K-Son that's going to be hosting the show and looking for new You know, I feel like that, man. I won a slot in Little Rock when I was doing a performance. So, you know what I'm saying? I had to come stop by here and look up town, man. For sure. How often you come out here? I've been there a few times in the past doing shows and shit, man. It's been a minute because I DJ and shit too. So I've been in the club on and off with the music and shit. So now I'm back on it for a throttle. Mm -hmm. So how do you feel the scene differs from Arkansas from Atlanta? Oh, it's a big difference, but at the same time, I've been from LA all the way to New York doing mm -hmm. music. So it's kind of the same. You know what I'm saying? It's just a bigger market here because y'all got so much opportunity that we ain't got in Arkansas. Mm -hmm. Coming from a city like all timer where the population is only 800 people, what is the life like out there? Man, listen, I, I, I can't stress this enough. I said this is one of my songs called Head and Hard. It's about the town. Like, if you weren't selling dope or playing sports, mm -hmm. you really wasn't shit. You know what I'm saying? You're going to work a nine to five. You're going to be an average person. So if you're doing something, you got to branch out and really leave that motherfucker, man, or you're stuck. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't, I couldn't get stuck on that. Mm -hmm. What inspired the move to Little Rock? I went, you know, so I went to five different high schools. So once I got out of high school, I went from all the time of the Pine Bluff, Pine Bluff, and like two, three years ago, I went to Little Rock because shit, I was already working in the clubs and shit. So once I, I was like, I'm tired of driving back and forth, two, three o'clock in the morning trying to go back home and shit. So mm -hmm. I had to just go and make that move. Mm -hmm. So when would you consider yourself jumping off the porch? When did you start getting active in? music or when did you still getting active in the streets man i um been in the streets forever but you know what i'm saying like i had my first real hit because i've been rapping all my life my first real hit was like 2014 like the end of 13 14 type shit i got a song called here first i did with my boy chuck Measy, and that song was on the radio like three four times a day and mm -hmm. the club was spinning it every weekend like the first time they played it in the club i never forget it we had dropped the video probably like that wednesday we went to a party that Saturday in the club and boom, everybody already knew the song. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So it kind of fucked me up. So when it went from the club to the radio, everybody was on it. The mm -hmm. craziest shit I ever heard, I pulled up at the gas station one day and the dude was blasting in, in his car. Mm -hmm. I'm like, man, that's my shit right there. He was like, yeah, that's my shit too. And walked in the store on my ass. Yeah. I'm like, man, he must not know what I mean when I said that was my shit. Yo. You know what I'm so, yeah. What was the biggest life lesson you learned living in Arkansas? Living in Arkansas, man, is stay out the way. Mm -hmm. Stay out the goddamn way, man, because everywhere I went, no matter what state it is, mm -hmm. they resort back to the banging and Little Rock and all that. And with me being a blood coming from Pine Bluff Way and shit like that, where mainly GDs and Crips, mm -hmm. you got to stay out the way. It ain't no big beef like that between the gangs and sets and shit, but you got to stay out the way, especially if you're doing something popular-wise. Mm -hmm. And you've been making music your entire life. What was some of the early musical influence you had? Like, who the were you listening to that made you inspired to be like, you know what, I want to tap into that? Man, my, growing up, like, my idol was Master P. You know what I'm saying? Because I like the fact I don't want to work for nobody. I want to do it all myself. But growing up, my favorite rappers was local niggas. Mm -hmm. I got Great Low, you know what I'm saying? Recipe, Great Low, Rod, Great Low, man. They had player made growing up. Mm -hmm. I always loved their music. I like their drive and shit like that. So. They gave me opportunities to get with them, mm. but I ain't want to do that. I want to be like him. You know what I'm saying? So I branched off and got my own shit, and we just collabed on stuff. That's and that was kind of like my influences. You know what I'm saying? Growing up, that's a lot. When and what motivated you to like start taking it seriously and start investing in more of your time, money into music? I had to take it serious when I got to the point. Every job I had, mm. fresh out of high school. Mm. I end up getting a show. I never forget it. I got called to Miami to do a show with Coast to Coast Mixtape. Mm. It was on like a Thursday. They let me. They sent me the email on a Wednesday. You know what I'm saying? So I up and flew out. When I came back home, they told me I was fired. And you know what I'm saying? My my pleasure, yeah. you know, he was a supervisor out there. He was like, man, I can get you the job back, 
I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I don't even want it. Because the music taking me everywhere I dreamed of going. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, LeBron was playing for Miami at the time. I always wanted to go to Miami. And boom, mm-hmm. I went there rapping. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, the music taking me places I really want to be. Mm-hmm. So I had to take it serious at that point. Like, because it was, it was actually paying off. Mm-hmm. That's what's up. So as you mentioned before, besides rapping, you're also a DJ. Yeah. How did you tap into that crowd? Man, I, in high school, like, I've been throwing birthday parties forever. Mm-hmm. And I'll never forget, like, my 15th birthday party. I threw a party, and my mama, you know, she rented this building out. We mm-hmm. charged people, like, 2 $3 to get in. The room wasn't big enough for how many people that came. Mm-hmm. And the DJ I had was garbage. He was an older cat, you know what I'm saying? He didn't really have a lot of the music we wanted to listen to, but it was so packed in there to where we were stuck together, you know what I'm saying? So after that year, I started doing DJing my own parties. So by the time I got to the 12th grade, I was DJing all our house parties, all our events, you know what I'm saying? And by the time I got out of high school, I remember I was 17 years old when I got the keys to the first club I worked at, you know what I'm saying, in our town. So once I got the got in the groove with it, mm-hmm. from going to from mix CDs to actually working virtual DJ and all that type of shit, man, it was like this work because it was putting money in my pocket. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? I heard you mention that you use virtual DJ. Ever tried to like transition to Serato or you just stay where you were comfortable at? Uh, see, I still use virtual DJ, but fucking with my guy Don Vino, man, we the hood favorite DJs. I yeah. started that. He actually hit with me today, but they fuck with Serato and shit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So. I start getting in the clubs, fucking with them, and I'm seeing them, you know what I'm saying? Because all I got to do is look. I'm a visual learner, so mm-hmm. I'm looking. And when they go to the bathroom or something, I'm taking over the club, yeah. you know, on day nights, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? So it, 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 I know how to work both, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Tell us more about Hood Favorite DJs. See, the Hood Favorite DJs started, this guy Trey Hill, Trey Hill and Pine Bluff, they mm-hmm. threw a block party, and I was DJing it. And like 300 shots rang off in the middle of me DJing. And what I'm so used to, you know what I'm saying, street shit, like mm-hmm. everybody running and shit, and I'm still DJing. <laughs> like, because for one thing, I'm noticing everybody shooting that way. So mm-hmm. ain't no point of me running that way. Mm-hmm. And at the end of that shit, everybody like, Ice Man, why you ain't shooting? Listen, brother, I'm the only one standing here with bullets left in my gun. Y'all was shooting at a ghost. That man been gone. Mm-hmm. Since that day, I knew the hood's favorite DJ is because every who it is, ratchet ass party, yeah. I'm the DJ at every one of them. Mm. And it just went from there. It went from who's favorite DJs to who's favorite host, you know what I'm saying, to just who's favorite because I got mm. too many titles, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. How does being a DJ also help you as an artist? It helped me a lot because a lot of them clubs, if I'm in Arkansas, majority of the clubs, I'm getting in free. Mm-hmm. I'm skipping line. And these clubs, I ain't even DJing in. It's just, now I don't have to big DJs to play my music. Like, I have people in the party come up to me like, Ice Man, go ask them to play this or go ask them to play that. You go ask them, brother mm-hmm. or sister. You know what I'm saying? Because I got the respect from the DJs because we work together to where they're going to spin it anyway. Mm-hmm. So, you know what I'm saying? Even especially with my BMI Live, I'm gonna run a checkup because every time I'm in the club, I'm most definitely playing my music to where I can get them royalties. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? So it helped me a lot. How do you feel the club scene in Little Rock differs from other major cities you've been to or other major cities you DJ that before? Man, it's it's different because in Little Rock, you got your certain crowds at every club. Like the main club I was at, Club 428. Shout out to them, like, that's a hood club street niggas and street mm-hmm. bitches and shit. And you got other clubs that's catered to the bougie. And then you got other clubs that might go longer to five o'clock or something to where you have a mixed crowd in it. But I go out of town, it's mixed. Like mm-hmm. I was in Miami and Panama and shit like that. I'm hearing it go from boost and set it off to some techno <laughs> shit. You know what I'm saying? Like this shit different, but everybody kicking it. Like they kicking it so hard that I'm up in there on that techno shit too. Like, <laughs> damn. But it, it's, it's different because that shit won't fly in the clubs I'm yeah. used to being in, in Arkansas. You see yeah. what I'm saying? And you're also a photographer, man. You're just a jack of all trades, yeah. man. So how did you tap into photography? Man, ice photography, man. I got my first camera when I was probably like 17. I was like 11, 12th grade. And in 12th grade, like, I was doing damn near my whole class senior pictures. Mm. 
and invitations and shit. You know what I'm saying? When I got tapped in the end, I'm like, oh, I'm making a bunch of money to where I was taking pictures in the club. And that's what really made me start losing jobs and mm-hmm. shit. Because I'm like, man, I'm working six days a week, five days a week, getting about a $400 check. I just took pictures in the club for like an hour and a half, mm-hmm. and I just made three, four hundred dollars. Man, fuck that job. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm doing five dollar prints. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I'm taking pictures and printing them. Yeah. So it went from working in clubs to where I'm making my most money in the clubs in one night mm-hmm. to doing weddings and you know what I'm saying, birthday parties, all type of shit. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And I just perfected the craft to make it good enough. You know what I'm saying? Sure. All right. So what we got? Artists, DJ, photographer. You also own a clothing line called Vocal Buddy Clothing. Man, right now I'm pushing that light skin shit on the way, man. But <laughs> Vocal Buddy Clothing, man, if anybody ever tap into my music, y'all gonna hear my tag Iceman on these Vocal Buddy. Mm-hmm. So, you know what I'm saying? The Vocal Buddy Clothing came from that to where it's Vocal Buddy Clothing clothes that speak for you. Mm-hmm. The first designs I had was these lips, like mm-hmm. all different color lips and shit. And they got the Vocal Buddy busted out the side of it. And I went from them in a bunch of different colors to now I got like 30 different designs. Mm-hmm. So, you know what I'm saying? Every day I'm wearing a new vocal body fit. Mm-hmm. So, you know what I'm saying? In my first month, I know the first two weeks I was paying somebody, 18 DJs, I was paying D Dirt them $10 a shirt. I'm selling them for 20. I'm like, mm-hmm. damn, I'm losing $10 a piece. I went bought the damn printer and shit and started ironing them bitches on at home. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, damn. At the end of the first month, I'm like, I done made a thousand dollars out this straight t-shirts. Mm-hmm. And I sell full outfits. Studs love my outfits. Why? I don't know. They buy full outfits. Niggas want to buy t-shirts, but the studs, they buying whole outfits. Head to toe. You know what I'm saying? So the vocal butter drip is something serious. For so sure. where did your passion for entrepreneurship come from? Like I said, man, my, my idol is Master P. You know what I'm saying? I studied him, the way he studied the business. I'll I never forget when I heard him go to Michael Jackson's attorney, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, how's Michael Jackson getting this? And he told him, bring me back a hundred thousand. I talked to you, he said he went and did it the next day. Mm-hmm. And he was getting 80% of royalties when Michael Jackson was getting 20. And I'm like, damn, hold up, this man doing that? Plus he's going, you he like the first unsigned artist selling out of Walmart. You know what I'm saying? When I was a kid, if I heard you on the radio, I didn't believe local artists could be on the radio. Mm-hmm. So we heard you on the radio as kids, you was famous to us. Mm-hmm. And to see this man go platinum out the trunk, it wasn't nothing else that a motherfucker had to tell me about, you no. Know, then you got people like Snoop Dogg coming all the way from California, signing with this man telling him, you know what I'm saying? The first thing he say to him, you know, man, Master P telling him, I want uh, Mystical to get on the song with you, what you want for it? And Snoop tell him, I want 25. He said, I wasn't thinking this man was going to come back with 25000 I was talking about 2500 mm. You know what I'm saying? That was inspiring to me that you your own boss of everything. And I didn't even have artists under me to where I didn't try to take them same steps. You know what I'm saying? I pray every day, like, if I can help somebody make it, I did my job. Mm-hmm. How would you describe the music scene in Little Rock at right now? Man, it's a million fucking artists. A million artists. I just made a post yesterday. I got on Facebook, I was like, man, attention all artists. Stop getting on here saying, Arkansas ain't nothing but a popularity contest. They don't listen to talent. We all know that. Get your unknown ass up and go get popular. Mm. Cause ain't nobody gonna listen to somebody they ain't never fucking heard of. Mm. I'm not gonna go smoke no new strand of weed if we ain't never heard of what the fuck it is. I'm not gonna drink no new drink if I ain't never seen it in the store. So if you ain't popular, how a motherfucker gonna follow you anyway? Mm. So you know what I'm saying? That's that's basically what's going on in Lil Rock. You know what I'm saying? It, the whole Arkansas. Let me not just put that on Lil Rock because it's a this shit like sports. Everybody trying to be the best. I, I just want to be in the game. I ain't fucked up by starting. Mm-hmm. It's just, you know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers want you to respect them as this big ass artist when they ain't put in no work. Do mm-hmm. so you feel the artists are supportive of each other? Some are, you know. If, through the COVID-19, if you went fuck around on Chico, I don't feel like you was doing nothing. Mm-hmm. There's a couple of people that was doing something, you know what I'm saying, outside of that, that record somewhere else or something, but we got two studios on Chico. We got mm-hmm. Player Made Studio, we got 18 Studios. In the midst of that, we was dropping videos out the videos, whole mixtapes, all that shit during the whole COVID. We got mm-hmm. rich during the COVID. Mm-hmm. Why do you feel like the talent in Arkansas is overlooked? 
I used to say that the industry was scared of Arkansas. We was a security hazard to them. Mm -hmm. We feel like if, if we sign them, they're going to blow it. Catch a murder charge, catch a dope charge, you know, fuck up. And then we had an artist go. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And they ain't the first. It's a couple of them that went, but they didn't hold a spot down. You know what I'm saying? So I can't tell you what it is now. We just don't have no major there to sign nobody. Mm. Basically, what's going on, because we can't wait. The man that already blew, we can't expect him to come get us when he had homeboy that he grew up with that's rap. So he mm. got to get them first. Yeah. And I respect that to the fullest. Mm. You recently just dropped your collab project, 5 on 5, with T. Skrilla. What was the inspiration behind the title? Still yeah, stone on my blood. You know, you can't, it, it, it don't make no more sense than that. You know what I'm saying? You know, you got a lot of blood that's not only the five, but hey, I am. Mm. So, you know what I'm saying? That's that's where they came from. You recently just dropped a music video for Cut It Out. What can you tell us about the inspiration behind this song? It was, man, it wasn't even supposed to be no fucking strip club song, but the beat just made it that. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It was just, because the way my boy Screel work, he don't write shit. Mm. Like, we just get in there. I'm a right. But you know what I'm saying? He just get in there, he'll spit something, and we'll go at it. And we got Joker B's on there. So, you know what I'm saying? It was just a quick ass project we put together that ended up being a hit. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? What can you tell us about the next upcoming visuals you got rolling out? Man, after Cut It Out came out, I dropped my Iceman Buddy Shooter video. Mm -hmm. I made over 12,000 right now. I just shot that in Houston a couple weeks ago. And mm -hmm. I edited it myself because I pulled up to the studio down there. I couldn't book no studio time. It's one of the popular studios where mm -hmm. South Walk and all them be recording that. And all these niggas in there. You know what I'm saying? So I couldn't record because they didn't have no time book. So I got a nigga that's working in there. Shout out to Jay Trey, man. Mm -hmm. And I said, man, let's shoot a video on the parking lot. So we shot a video on the parking lot and made everybody in the studio come outside and watch it. Mm -hmm. So you know what I'm saying? I came home, put it together and dropped it. It's off, it's off the five on five tape too, but it's doing numbers right now. So mm -hmm. I got... The shooter song got right now, and off the five on five tape we just dropped the they ain't know it video. Mm -hmm. It's on the five on five mixtape YouTube YouTube page too. So you know what I'm saying, y'all. We got visuals of study coming. Mm -hmm. Ten songs on that tape we dropping ten videos. Mm -hmm. What's your personal favorite record of yours? Mine right now, man. My biggest record is Distributed Sauce. Mm -hmm. A lot of people know it by I know she a freak. I know she nasty. But it's called Distributing Sauce, man. I can't go nowhere without performing this song. Mm. I'm gonna be performing it tonight. That's a real hit that I didn't even know was gonna do that. For sure. What's your biggest song? Head first, what was my biggest? Mm -hmm. Distributing Sauce, my biggest. Mm. <laughs> and I ain't even got a visual out to it yet. Mm. You know, and it's still my biggest. Mm. Like, I done did multiple competitions with that song where niggas went in there with eight minute time frames mm. and I didn't know we could chop up the times. <laughs> and I just went in there and just dropped that one song and beat out 40 artists. Mm. You see what I'm saying with just one song. So I, that's the biggest song I got right now. So sure. what's the next project you're working on right now? Light skin shit on the <laughs> way. I'm screaming at every party, light skin shit on the way. Light skin artists on it. Sure. Trying to make history with this motherfucker. What was the inspiration behind this project, man? I was in the studio, man, and shout out to my boy Tay and my boy Baby Joe. Them. They was in the studio with cool one boy Screer. Yeah. Screer was in there doing a hard ass song. I'm like, bro, you hell that one out from me. You know what I'm saying? Why I ain't on it? You know, I, well, I was just joking, though. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? But my boy Baby Joe them was in there and Tay them was in there. They light as fuck. I'm talking about <laughs> light as they light y'all got on me. And I'm like, man, you know what? We're going to do a goddamn take called light skin shit on the way. Ain't number light skin artists on there. And they thought I was bullshit. Yeah. Next time they shout me, I'm pushing that shit on shirts. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I done paid a deposit on my goddamn cover and everything. You know what I'm saying? It's on the way now. Eight songs in. That was about three weeks ago. Mm. So, you know what I'm saying? I, light skin artists on there. Mm. Any features? Who are the features? Once again, my boy TGC, my boy Tay, Baby Joe on there. I got Guapo, I got a lot of other artists from Arkansas. You know what I'm saying? I'm giving everybody time enough mm -hmm. to jump on there. Just tap in. If you light skin, just tap in. I don't give a damn if you male, female, tap in because I'm not finna come find you. Mm. I'm only gonna ask you once because if it's up to me, this tape would have been done. Mm. I would have been dropped it. But light skin shit on the way with all these artists mm. and the 
fucked up twist about it is, it's mm. produced by How D Black Do That, one of the blackest niggas I know. <laughs> he the only black person that got something to do with this motherfucker because of his name. Mm. So there ain't no other light skinned producers? Nope. <laughs> light skinned shit on the way now. How D Black Do That? Hey man, that just lets you know the dark skinned niggas running shit, man. They ain't running shit. Y'all better come with a compilation <laughs> mixtape behind this motherfucker. That's all I gotta say. That's the whole point of this. Y'all better team up and do something after this. Y'all gotta respond. <laughs> For sure. Gotta respond. <laughs> What's the next single you got, man? The next thing I got, man, the tape going so hard, it's kind of hard to pick. I got a song called. I need a plug. If y'all know the LL Cool J song, I Need Love, I redid that. <laughs> I got the Pimp Juice remake, mm. the Nelly Pimp Juice. But one of my biggest ones right now that's mm. already recorded, mm. TGC on there with me, man. That motherfucker, hey, listen, it's called Duck. Mm. I need a duck. Mm. That's one of the biggest songs that's jumping on that motherfucker right For now. For sure. So when can we expect to see this project, man? Light skin shit on the way. When can we expect to see y'all light skin niggas showing out? I'm gonna I'm let the month go on, finish out good. Probably in the middle of next month, the end of next month. I'm trying to give it the most time it can because when it drop, I'm dropping on all major markets. I'm talking about Vivo videos, all that type of shit. And I'm trying to give it enough time to where it don't be rushed. Because sure. I'm trying to be big with it. By next year, when on light skin shit on the way part two come out, I'm mm. looking at major light skin artists. You know what I'm saying? So. <laughs> Real shit, like like yeah. Beyonce, yeah. All of Megan, Chris Brown, Drake, out. They gonna be light skin, man. Listen, she will be with that makeup on. <laughs> so you know what I'm saying? They gonna have to go get Jamie Fox and Tank and all them niggas together and do yeah. To be fun to this. <laughs> like for real, for sure. So with all the Black Lives Matter movement going on, how do you feel about the George Floyd protest and the Breonna Taylor protest? Man, I, I'm pro-black to the death of me, you know what I'm saying? But I grew up around none but black folks. Mm -hmm. And then I understand why everybody protests. Mm -hmm. I, I hate that it started going on with the police officers and all that type of shit. But before we get out and protest on them white officers like that, do something about your neighborhood first. Because one thing I do know, since slavery been over with, niggas killing more niggas than the folks. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of time with us being in the streets, we understand why. But I want black people to stop killing yourself if you're going to get on TV just to do this and get 100,000 likes on Instagram. You know what I'm saying? Like, we got to stop that shit too. Because people in my neighborhood didn't die from the police. They died from somebody else in the neighborhood. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm with it. But I'm, you know what I'm saying? I got to stand on what I'm going through first before I step out in the world for some publicity. You know mm. what I'm saying? For sure. Any shout outs? Shout out to Arkansas, man. First and foremost, our time of Arkansas. The smallest city could nobody fuck with us in sports. <laughs> shout out to Arkansas, Time Bluff, Little Rock, Hot Springs, Cedar Block, Tyru. Man, just, I'm gonna just keep saying the Arkansas as a whole, like we gotta, we gotta come on up out of there. Mm. We got to come on about it. I got three kids, so you know what I'm saying? Shout out to my kids, Brooklyn, Kyrie, and Kyler. Shout out to y'all. Y'all my biggest motivation, my mama. Once again, all the artists I'm fucking with, my hood's favorite DJ, Don Bino. Mm. You know what I'm saying? How D-Black do that, my boy. I'll dress at them, the people I grew up listening to, Tutho, Player Made, all these people from the Player Made in 870 to the Player Made in 501, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. 18 Studios, all the artists on their uh, roster. Shout out to my boy. T Dirt, you the one hosting the tape. If y'all ever watched the underground, the real underground radio from Little Rock, they the ones on there with the message squad, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So he the one hosting it. So Arkansas, man, I just gotta keep stressing it. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? We on that Arkansas country shit tough. Sure. All right, Ice Man, buddy, man. Appreciate having you on the porch today, man. Man, I'm jumping off the porch here first, man. I posted in the club with the shooter. Miss we gonna pull a little light over. The chopper got titties like holders. Yeah. Don't make me put my foot off in your poodle. Yeah, them